Welcome back, everyone. I am so delighted we are here on day five. Day five. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. I know some of you have been here since day one. I know some of you joined later on. That's perfectly fine. Wherever you are, I'm so honored to walk this journey with you. And today to be here for for this final day of this journey, I see a question. How do I put my picture and name on chat? I don't know, Jojo. Picture and name on chat. I'm not sure, but if somebody else knows the answer, they can tell you that. We do see your name, by the way, Jojo. Okay. So I'm going to do a couple of things. Well, one, I have all the names here in the magic bowl. So these are the names of everybody who was here live on the four days. And you, your name is in there every live class that you attended. So some of you attended all of them. So some of you, your names are in here four times already. Now, obviously I didn't know who was going to attend live today. So, but I did go ahead and just kind of print out the names of everybody that's been here so far. So at least I would have some printed. So in a few minutes, if someone can remind me, maybe like in five minutes or something like that to look, and then I'll add the names for today. Okay. So let's do a little recap and I have my little notes here. So we have been talking about sharing your soul's medicine in your career, in your creative endeavors. And on day one, practice one was receiving from your soul. It sounds so simple because it is so simple, but it's not necessarily easy, right? So I shared with you my little drawings, all right? It was like the soul plane, the earth plane, and we have our soul with all these beautiful soul qualities, right? And then who's always giving to us, but we're here on the earth plane and where's that other drawing? I need an assistant to be holding these up. I taught so many classes today. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. So we want this barrier, right? Between the soul plane and the earth plane to be fluid so that you're, you're, you're able to, to do that movement and effort like easily, right? That it's not so jarring. I remember at first when I really started to deepen, not just in my meditation practice, but actually also doing healing for others and all of that. It was very, one of my teachers calls it like having whiplash from like being in the higher realms and then dropping back on earth, right? It's like higher realms, peace, joy, you know, everything makes sense. And coming back to earth, my parts triggered the collective energy. It was very jarring. So that is why when you receive every day, when you're practicing doing that every day throughout the day, this becomes more fluid, right? So practice one was you just letting yourself receive, right? And in my book, what I call them is interrupter rituals, right? You're It's a ritual where you're interrupting the ego structure because the ego structure hates being interrupted. It just does. It thinks, you know, that's why it thinks our to, our, it believes our to-do list is the most important thing ever. And absolutely not. We cannot pause even for 30 seconds to receive, right? So that was the first practice, right? And then practice number two was all about your parts, right? And, and I really was talking about blending with your soul, um, blending from the different parts of you. How do you blend with your soul? You blend with your soul, sorry, <laughs> by receiving from your soul every day. So this is the thing. I remember when I first started teaching meditation that I would have a lot of students who would be like, well, I meditate like, at least I get three times a week, I get to meditate. And, you know, maybe I meditate for 30 minutes or, and which is great. I am not saying that's bad, but for the, this purpose, for the purpose of becoming masterful at receiving from your soul, it's con consistency is what's the most important. So you can have your meditation practice, which is as I have my meditation practice, which is so important but it can be helpful to think about this differently. That's why I didn't call my, this practice in my book, meditation. I called it an interrupter ritual, right? A ritual that you do throughout the day 
30 seconds, one minute, where you're getting really good at receiving. You're getting really good at receiving. And what that does over time is you're getting really good at blending with your soul. You're getting really good at being in the soul plane. And at first, it doesn't seem like anything is happening, but you practice that. So then practice too, blending with your soul, unblending from your parts, right? So I talked about all the different parts that we have, right? The different parts that we have, right? And how, why is it so challenging to not only receive from our soul, but receive the guidance and then take action consistently on the guidance, it's because of our parts, because we're in the earth plane, because it's designed that way. The programming of the earth is that we're separate from source. As soon as we believe that we're separate from our source, what comes in? Competition, uh, feeling unworthy, feeling better than, feeling judgmental, feeling like people are judging us, being afraid of people of what people will say about us afraid of rejection, all that comes only in the earth plane because of that program that has programmed us to believe we're separate from source. And so our parts, our lovely, beautiful parts ha have burdens and operate often under that program. And so practice number two was really just this really simple tool of your parts diagram to be able to start to understand specifically for this topic, what are the parts that are getting in the way that are scared of you truly following your soul's guidance every day to share your soul's medicine, right? And many of you shared, well, I'm afraid my soul's gonna ask me to do something I don't wanna do. I feel guilt, I have a part, and I really encourage you to use that language. I have a part that feels guilty that if I really focus on sharing my medicine, I'm gonna neglect my loved ones, my parents, my kids, whoever it is, right? Or I have a part that's afraid to get overwhelmed, that if I share my soul's medicine, I'm just going to get overwhelmed and get so exhausted, right? Or you might have parts that are afraid of being rejected. All, this is all very, very normal, but so important to name, right? And so, and we did a little inner journey where you really brought in this worry, this belief, this fear, we brought this into the soul plane to have your soul start to help you dissolve this, right? And this is just a little taste of the process, right? This isn't like the complete process, but this, even if you can just start naming, oh my gosh, these are the parts, this is what happens. And I also shared how it's a very, like whenever you find that either or thinking, that's a part, right? Because your soul is so vast. So if you have the part, for example, well, either I focus on my soul's medicine, but I've shared this already, right? But then neglect everyone else in my life. And I, you know, I feel guilty or I pay attention to everybody in my life, but I don't share my soul's medicine. That's either, or that's like your, that's our parts or that's the ego structure. Your soul is always guiding you to do something that's going to benefit the whole. Your soul will never, ever, 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 ever guide you to do something that's going to be selfish or that hurts anyone. Even if in the moment you're like, but my soul is guiding me to set a boundary and I know that person's going to get hurt, like her feelings hurt. They're going to feel hurt. They're going to be disappointed in me because I'm not doing the thing they want me to do. That will happen, of course. Because we have emotions and we're in the earth plane. So that's a very normal part of this journey. In fact, I often tell my clients, part of the journey is starting to get comfortable with disappointing people, right? And I know for some of us, that's like, oh, no, that can feel like the worst thing ever. And, but you need to understand that if your soul's guiding you to set a boundary, for example, is because your soul understands that as you do that, you're actually going to be able to tap into your true soul's medicine, and that is going to bless everyone. Then we talked about specifically the part, the inner child part, right? And I talked about that aspect of your soul, the soul child, which mine has wings like butterflies <laughs> and a crown. And she also has a really pretty dress, but anyway, right? And all of these very kind of specific qualities that that child aspect of our soul has vitality, joy, faith, 
innocence, truth, love, creativity, imagination, purity, not the religious dogma definitions of those, right? And not the naive definition of those. Right? We, can, we can hear a word like play and think like, oh my gosh, that's like, I mean, nice, but how is that going to help me be a leader or help others? But when it's coming from our soul, play is absolutely something we must do. It, it's absolutely part of our soul's makeup. It is absolutely what, when you're in that playful energy, you can access genius solutions, right? You can access new pathways. You can access different aspects of your creativity. And then of course we have our inner child, which there's actually many inner children, right? And who often, you know, carry a lot of burdens. And so I really talked about that day, how absolutely your leadership journey, your journey of sharing your soul's medicine is going to bring up those inner child wounds. It's just part of the process. It's meant to happen that way because we are meant to heal our inner children because our inner children have a direct line to our soul child. And the world needs that energy to heal, to ascend, to awaken. So if you are one of those people like me that feels like, oh my gosh, I totally have inner children and I've been so embarrassed all my life because they're so present or I cry inappropriately or I'm so sensitive or, I mean, these are the judgments you're telling yourself, right? Or whatever, whatever it is, fill in the blanks. You know, for me, it's like, I'm so sensitive or I wear my heart on my sleeve or I don't, you know, I'm so uh, sensitive to what people think, you know, because you you have that sensitive inner child part. It's like for you to understand, like, that's your power. Now we need to help that inner child part, right? But that is needed so much in this world. So we talked about that. The other thing I shared, then we talked about practice three, which was yesterday, taking action. And what I shared, one of the key takeaways is that taking action, like, how do I, how did I say this? Your soul's medicine only exists in the earth plane, the medicine aspect of it. The soul plane does not need medicine. The soul plane is whole, is healed. There's layers of it. Your medicine is only needed here because of the polarity, because of the belief in the separation. So if you really want to share your soul's medicine, it only happens through action in the earth plane. So if you, and a lot of people can get stuck in this, they're like, I love being in the soul plane. I just want to stay there forever and ever and ever. It feels so beautiful. I love it there. I don't ever want to come down to the earth plane. If we do that, and it's normal to have those parts, right? Please understand that then you're not helping the earth plane. Then we're just escaping, which is why my soul very early on said meditation is not meant to be an escape. Suzanne, I don't, you know, Suzanne is asking a question um, that comes from the Sophia Code. In the Sophia Code, they use the term Phoenix child. I couldn't say exactly. I, to me, it sounds very similar. It, I, I feel a similar energy, but obviously I did not write the Sophia Code. I didn't channel that book. So I, I would be hesitant to say it's exactly the same thing. But for me, the soul child is our, that aspect of our soul that is childlike. And so if in your mind, that's like sim, uh, synonymous to Phoenix child, absolutely go with that, okay? And then of course you can ask your soul for any specifics around that, more detail about that. So action is what anchors heaven on earth. Action is what how you share your medicine. Action is what your soul is guiding you to take. Your soul, as much as your soul loves you, isn't at some point when we transition, of course, we're going to go to the soul plane and decide, are we going to come back to earth or all of that stuff? But while you're here on the earth plane, your soul is here to support you, to bless you, to guide you in the, as the Sophia Code says, in the legacy of love that you are creating here. 
Okay. And so yesterday I talked about the golden action steps, right? That as soon as our parts here, you must take action. All of the burdened energy about taking action comes up. Either parts that are like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to take action. That's overwhelming. It terrifies me. I feel so ashamed. I haven't taken enough action. There could be that. Or parts that love action and are like, okay, tell me what to do. I, I'm totally a hustler. I could do it. Tell me what to do. I hate not doing stuff. So just give me a to-do list, right? It could be either of those extremes or anywhere in between. And so I really described the golden action steps, which are steps that your soul guides you to take. I gave a whole long list of them. So if you didn't see day four, that's okay. You can go back and watch that replay. And, and the reason for me giving examples is so that you understand a golden action step can look through the physical eyes, very simple, almost insignificant. Your parts might actually judge it. Like, wait, what? My golden action step is to go sit in the sun for five minutes? I mean, I don't know. I'm just making that up. I'm not sure I made that up. You might have parts that think that is no way a golden action step. I must go do stuff, right? Or it might be, you know, something connected to nutrition. Or it might be go teach the class that you've been putting off, that you keep saying you're not ready and your soul is saying, yes, you are ready. Yes, you are ready. You're going to perfect as you go, perfect as you go, which by the way, that is a soul teaching. Perfect as you go, refine as you go. It is the wounded masculine that says it must be perfect before you share it. You must have it just all exactly how it's meant to be before anyone sees it. We don't have the luxury of that, even if that was ever true, but it's like, the teaching that the world needs is to perfect and refine as you go. You've seen me model that time after time, after time, after time, if you've been doing work with me for some time now, right? Some of you were there when I taught classes in person. I'm not saying I'm done with those. I'm so excited to be able to do that here in Mexico when the time is right. And I'll put out an invitation if you ever want to come join me with that. But there was, if I had allowed my parts to take over and say, no, no, you have to be, it has to be perfect before you teach anything, I'd still be waiting, right? So we talked about that yesterday. So today we're going to continue the conversation about taking actions. And the number one reason that people take an action or do not take an action is the emotions that they're feeling, Okay. So your emotions, your feelings, and I'm going to use those two words um, synonymously. I know some people define them differently, but for the purposes of this uh, five-day journey, it's the same. So don't let that confuse you if I use the word emotions or feelings. So think about it, right? And I, I'm looking at my notes because I want to make sure to keep this concise and to the point because there's so much I want to say about this. So nobody teaches us about this, right? And particularly in sharing your soul's medicine, there is a misconception. First, let me look at the names because I just, I just got reminded of that. So for the reading, so I'm like, Deborah, I have you here, Jill, okay, Jojo. Karen, Kimberly, Kimberly, I don't have you here for some reason. Laura, I know there's like no other way for me to do this unless I had like a Letty, an assistant <laughs> who's here with me, Michelle, Romana, and Suzanne. Okay, Suzanne, you're at it. Okay, so I'm just going to put your all names in the little thing. And that way I don't have to think about that. And Jen, are you here? Jen, 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 oh, Jen's not here, okay. Jen, this one's here, Deborah's here. And then I'll read the comment that is on the thing. I just really want everybody's name to be here who's all the times that you've been here. 
Okay, you're not here. You are here. And then Suzanne and Lithy, I will add you now. All right, thank you all. I'm putting your names in the bowl. Okay, so everybody's there. Perfect. So Michelle, I definitely judge myself for what my golden action step was today. Play and go buy yellow flowers. Oh my gosh. I can, I, I'll keep reading, but I cannot tell you how many clients I've had, especially at the beginning, where their golden action step was to buy themselves flowers. It's funny. It's amazing. Like I know that was my golden action step several times, but, and, and one in particular was yellow flowers, yellow tulips. My parts were like, ah, but I should be doing this and I should be doing that. But I listened. They had to be yellow. I love that, Michelle. And you know, if what I've learned, you will get understanding on why it's yellow. Maybe it's because you're really working on your solar plexus chakra, you know, your center of power. Maybe it's going to come at a different time and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is why. But thank you for sharing that because that's such a perfect that's such a perfect example of a golden action step that you're like, oh my gosh, right? So let me continue. So there's a misconception that in order to take a uh, consistent action, so let's say, I don't know if there's someone here who has an example they can share. If not, I mean, I can come up with examples, but of a golden action step that's career related, right? That's related in the sense of you know, maybe you're being guided to share on social media more, or you're being guided to do a live class or lead a workshop, or you're being guided to, um, I don't know, share a meditation, something along those lines, write your book. And there's this work on your business, work on your soul's medicine in some way. There's a misconception. We think that in order to do that, we need to feel excited, motivated, inspired. Those are three very common ones. Excited, motivated, inspired. But I need to wait till I feel excited. I need to wait till I feel motivated. I need to wait till I feel inspired. And then so there's a lot of people, what happens is that, well, I need to write my newsletter, but I'm not excited, motivated, or inspired. So I'm just going to wait until I feel that. And you can be waiting quite a long time, right? And so it's really important to understand that we need to mature our emotional strength and start to understand that there are certain emotions that are more long lasting. Please do not misunderstand. I love feeling excited, motivated and inspired. You know, that feels so beautiful to me and, and I can feel those things. But I can tell you that in the 15 years I've been doing this work, if I was waiting to feel excited, motivated, and inspired to do what I do and what my soul is guiding me to do, I would have done way less than I've done, right? And so there you, so what's important, and it's important to know that because I, often when I start coaching clients, they'll believe, well, I'm supposed to wait until I feel those things. And it's actually not true. And so what's really important that, let me back up. So there's that. These are good, excited, motivated, inspired. Bad feelings are, this is what our parts can think. Feeling doubtful, feeling vulnerable, feeling self-doubt, what else did I write? Feeling worried, feeling anxious. Those are bad. So I don't wanna feel those when I'm taking steps. I wanna feel excited, motivated, inspired, and you might have other feelings, right? So what happens when we believe this is there it creates this back, either stagnation, we do nothing, or it creates this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's like we're driving with the brake on, right? Or we're opening door and closing it at the same time. Right? It's like, I feel excited. Yes, let me work on this. Oh, I feel self-doubt. Let me stop. I feel inspired. Awesome. Let me do this. Oh, now I feel self-doubt. Never mind. Let me stop. Right. And so we need to understand that the momentum happens when we start to take action, no matter what the weather of our emotions. But it's very important to know that I don't mean that you push through your emotions, that you 
shove them down. So that's what I mean. It's a it's a very spiritual, mature process to do this. Right. So a couple of things. And I am going to be doing a workshop, I think in March, where I really, really go into this developing that emotional strength. Or as one coach, I heard her talk about having emotional wealth, which I really love that. But it's like this emotional strength, which people misunderstand. People think that means I don't feel anything. I'm like a robot. I can do whatever because nothing bothers me. And that's not what I mean at all, right? It's like emotional strength, emotional power. And those of you who are incredibly sensitive as I am, you know, I know for me, it's always been about healing my emotions because I was just so, 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 so sensitive. So what is really important for you to start to understand, and we're going to do an inner journey where you ask your soul this question, is what are the emotions, the spiritually mature, emotionally powerful emotions that your soul is saying, use these as fuel. Yes, have motivation, excitement, inspiration. All of that will still be there. and You're going to feel it for sure. But those ebb and flow, it's very normal, they ebb and flow. So there are other emotions, right? There are other emotions that we can tap into, that we can cultivate, that we can ask our soul to help us develop, and that we, but only you can know which ones will be fuel for you. So for example, some of these might be commitment, right? And for those of you who choose a word for the year or a word chooses you, I remember one year the word that chose me was commitment. And I wasn't that crazy about it um, because again, it kind of felt like boring or like a lot of work, I don't know. But it was such an important year for me and I realized, oh, that's the fuel my soul wants me to come back to tap into. So that on those days when I don't feel motivated or excited or inspired, I can still show up because I feel committed. I'm committed to my soul. I'm committed to sharing my medicine. I'm committed to helping humanity. So even though I don't exactly feel excited about it right now, and sometimes I might feel a lot of other feelings, I'm committed. So I'm going to show up. That might not be your word, but I'm just sharing, right? So committed discipline might be one. Now, remember discipline. I've said this many times, right? Disciple student. So discipline, not rigor, like you're in the army, but discipline as you're a disciple of your soul. You're a student of your soul. You're at the feet of your soul saying, okay, guide me, teach me, lead me. Determination. Maybe that's a word that feels that's the feel for you. Remember, we're going to go on an inner journey for this. Perseverance might be one. Devotion. So maybe for you, it's like, well, I feel such a devotion to the Holy Mother, to the Sacred Mother, to the healing of the planet. That's going to be my fuel, right? So maybe it's that calm, presence, peace. There's many, many, many. So these are the emotions that we start to understand like, oh, that's what can be my fuel, Motivation, excitement, inspiration, those are awesome. And I'm all for them. I'm open to have them. But they ebb and flow because we live in a world of polarity. And so the wonderful thing about these practices is that when you practice, practice one, all of them, but when you practice receiving from your soul, your day by day, as you receive, you are creating space inside to be able to cultivate more of these fuels, more of these emotions. So I remember, I know yesterday I had a very, usually my Mondays are more kind of administrative work. And, but yesterday was just a very different type of Monday. It was just a lot. There was a lot I was going to do and today as well, but yesterday and I remember waking up and feeling my fuel was hustle. It was like, all right, I have all this stuff to do. I got to get it done. You know, it was just like I could feel my body was just like amping up. I have a very strong um, familiarity with that energy. 
right? Being a mom of five kids, being a teacher of seventh graders. I mean, that is like a, a like a, what is a setting that I can go into right away. But I'm really, really working on that because I recognize that rushing urgency hustle is not sustainable for me. Like it just isn't, I can't, I might be able to do it for a certain amount of time and then I crash and then I end up pulling back and that affects my momentum. And so yesterday I asked my soul, okay, what fuel do I need? I feel the fuel of hustle, but what's the fuel that I need? It was interesting. My parts really believed hustle was what I needed because I was going to be teaching classes, meeting with different you know, clients and potential clients. I was just had a lot to do. They were going to have a home repair. But when I asked my soul, what my soul said was calm. The fuel that will help you today is calm. And I was really surprised because calm seemed like Really? Is that really what's going to help me get everything done? I also hadn't slept well the night before. So I I think I had a part that was worried if I'm calm, I was just going to fall asleep. But my soul was like, feel what calm feels like in your body. And when I went into calm, I started, I felt very present. When I went into urgency, I was just in my head, do this, do this, do this, do this. And I wasn't present to anything, right? I was like, okay, you're going to do this. But remember, you've got that. I was just like, like a robot walking around with all this stuff in my head. But when I was calm, I was in my whole body. I could feel like immediately dropped in my body. I immediately noticed I was really tired because I hadn't slept the night before. And when I noticed that, I immediately wanted to go into rush, rush, rush urgency right away. But my soul was like, no, stay with calm. And I was like, okay, stay with calm. It's okay. I noticed that I'm tired, but I can still do this even tired. I mean, I'm sure all of you have this experience. Like I've done things while I'm tired. So then it was that. And then as I was calm and more present, I started to really be present with the tasks before me. And I recognized it was really fascinating to notice from urgency and rushing how much more depleted I was going to get. It's almost like I set this, this gear on rush, 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 rush. And I would actually feel very productive because not only would I do what I was supposed to do that day, but I would also do more. I would cross this list and this list and this list. But when I was calm, my soul was focused on the things you have to do. And then gave me like two really specific golden action steps to take that I would have never taken if I was in the rush energy. They were very, very simple. But it was like, oh, so that was such a learning experience for me. And I, I've been practicing this for a while, but I feel like this year it's going to this next level. And so when we go inside, it's 333, at least over here. We're going to ask your soul, what is the fuel that your soul wants you to practice? Okay. And okay. So these will be the questions. One is what is your dominant fuel right now when you're sharing your soul's medicine? What is the dominant fuel? Maybe it is motivation. Maybe it is excitement or maybe it is hustle or maybe it's frozen. Like when I think of sharing my soul's medicine, I just freeze. Like maybe it's that, maybe it's worry, maybe it's tentative. We'll see what it is, okay? No judgment is just kind of seeing. And then you're going to ask your soul, okay, well, what, and I'll guide you through the questions. What is the fuel that you want me to cultivate? And what is the fuel that will serve me the most? And we want to ask our soul because for example, with my example yesterday, I would have never chosen calm. I thought it had to be determined, focused, perseverant. Like I was going in that direction, but my soul was like calm, right? And so we'll see what yours is. Okay. And then I'll guide you with some other questions in there. And so when we talk about taking action steps, no matter what the outside circumstances, your golden action steps. Again, we want to be clear. This doesn't mean 
never rest. Don't take care of yourself. Even if you're sick, go do this. That is not what this means because your soul would never judge, would never guide you to do something that's going to harm you or harm someone else. Maybe your golden action step will be to drink tea and watch a movie. I don't know. That could be a golden action step. But there will be a time where maybe you're like, ooh, I can't wait to cuddle up and just watch Netflix because that's going to make me feel so good. And your soul is like, mm, you're, you're trying to escape. You're trying to buffer and you actually need to go do this, right? So it's not a rule. It's like you, we need to keep tuning in. And remember, your soul never judges you. So your soul loves you no matter what, whether you listen or not. But it's like there's no, there's no condition. So um, let me look at my notes and just see if there's anything else. So I guess that the key teaching for today is to understand the power of your emotions, right? And, and one of my teachers always says that the only reason we take action is because of how we think it's going to make us feel. And when she first said that, I was like, I don't know, is that really true? But I've tested it out. And it's really like, you know, we take action because we think it's going to make us feel good. It's going to make us feel better. Or we avoid taking action because we think we're going to feel bad or disappointed or guilt or whatever it is. Feelings are so attached to the action steps. So we must become really adept at navigating the vibration of emotions. Now, when I teach the workshop, I'm going to really kind of, I've been getting this map of the soul plane and the earth plane. And, you know, how can we look at emotions from that soul perspective? What are they actually? And why those of us who've actually struggled with our emotions for much of our life, how that was intentional, not the struggle, but that we actually came here to become really quite masterful, not at bearing our emotions or compartmentalizing them or not feeling them, but actually being able to be with them, breathe through them, let them move through our body and not take action because of the emotions, not give in to the urge. Oh, I don't want to disappoint that person. So I'm going to say yes. Right. It's like, that's the stuff we do. Right. It's like, so that's what we're learning. This is just a little taste of that. Okay. So let's go ahead and go into our inner journey. And so I invite you to, hold on, I'm just, um, okay. Close your eyes and take a few cleansing breaths. And of course, I welcome all of your beautiful angels and ascended master guides. I welcome your enlightened ancestors, these ancestors who are here to support you in sharing your medicine, who don't have an agenda, don't have anything they want you to heal for them. They are just here as your allies. And of course, we welcome the creator, creatrix, divine mother, father, God, great mystery, source, whatever name you use, the universe. We welcome that unconditional love to be here. And so I, I welcome your guardian angels to help clear your energy field right now. I just feel a lot, just kind of like just clear. You know, when we talk about emotions, it's very easy for us to become like little magnets to the emotions floating around. So let's just have our angels clear any emotions that might have become attached to us that are not even ours. They're just like little vibrations in the collective. A lot in the crown chakra I'm feeling, so we're just clearing that. And then bring your awareness to your heart. Maybe bring the palms of your hands over your heart center. And now at your heart, I know we've been playing with a golden flame, but right now I'm seeing this beautiful lavender flame. 
This lavender flame in your heart creates this lavender light that emanates from your heart. And before you appears this beautiful lavender, shades of lavender and purple path. And see yourself now standing on this beautiful purple lavender path. And as you stand on this lavender path, you become really aware of your emotional body. And it's okay if you're like, what is that emotional body? Just hear the words. This is like this layer, energy layer that it's like a blueprint of your emotions. What are very common emotions that you feel? Maybe you notice that, like, oh, I kind of go, these are like my default emotions. Some might feel very lovely. Some you might be like, oh, those are kind of heavy. Just notice without, try to do it without judgment. Just like notice, it's like I'm seeing it like a cloak. It's a cloak of your emotion, your emotional spectrum. And you're being seen, you're being shown emotions that you tend to feel a lot, both positive, quote unquote, positive and quote unquote, negative. But you also become aware that there's other emotions that look quite lovely, that you're quite curious about, even if you don't know yet what they are. And then you're like, hmm, why haven't I tried those on more? And I'm really seeing it like a cloak of stars right now. Now it's like, there's these stars that are really like, Ooh, I feel those a lot. I feel those a lot. I feel those a lot. But then you see these others are like, Ooh, they're so pretty, but I like hardly ever try those on. So you're on this lavender path. And now you see before you what we've been seeing every day. I think that, that uh, portal, but this is a purple lavender portal and on top it says soul plane and beautiful purple lavender letters and you're walking towards it you're standing in front of it and as you stand in front of it ooh, your emotional body is like whew, it's like twinkling it's like turning on you're like oh my gosh but it's not overwhelming you're just aware wow all this spectrum of emotions and if there's any parts that are getting activated because they're scared of certain emotions, that's what happens with our parts. We're like, oh no, those are bad emotions. Those are good emotions. I don't want to try those emotions. Just send those parts love. And I, I welcome Kuan Yin and Mother Mary. And they're just like soothing any of those parts. And now we're going to step in through the portal, the lavender purple portal, and you're going into the soul plane. And this, for some reason today, it is, it's all like purple, lavender shades, all these amazing shades. You're just looking around like, wow, it feels so nice. And your soul appears in front of you. And you notice your soul's qualities, your soul's soul's qualities. They're just like floating around her. And again, your soul is beyond gender, but I'm just going to use that pronoun for today. And so you notice almost like little uh, bubbles, like in a comic book, but it's like, oh, look at the qualities of your soul. Joy, bliss, abundance, spaciousness, love, generosity. It's just like you just see this the qualities of your soul. And your soul looks at you and sees all of the spectrum of your emotions because your soul understands you're in the earth plane and the earth's matrix, the earth's blueprint has all sorts of emotions woven in it. It has beautiful emotions and it has very hard, hard emotions. So your soul looks at you with so much love. Your soul doesn't judge you like, oh, how could you have those emotions? Look at me. 
you know, your soul knows I'm in the soul plane. It's pretty easy to have these, these qualities. You're in the earth plane. Right? Your soul understands you were courageous and volunteered to go into this world with all of this full spectrum of emotions. And so as you stand in front of your soul, you're going to ask your soul a few questions because your soul is sees, sees all, knows all, right? Like your soul knows. And so when it comes to sharing your soul's medicine, and you're just going to ask your soul this question, say, beautiful soul, what is my dominant fuel or my dominant feeling when I'm sharing my soul's medicine? What is my dominant fuel? Now, if it's a, how do we ask this? Your soul might show you one or two. So your soul might say, oh, your dominant fuel is love when you share your soul's medicine. And your soul might also say, but sometimes you really go into fear or you really go into self-doubt or you really go into hustle energy. And remember, your soul's not judging you. Your soul's just giving you information. Okay, so let's all of us, you're standing in front of your soul and you're asking, beautiful soul, illuminate me. Show me what is my dominant fuel. Fuel that helps me, but also show me the fuel that maybe isn't as hopeful. And so just listen. And if you have a journal, you can write it down or you could just listen. And if you don't hear anything, that's okay. It's going into your heart. What is the dominant fuel? So again, you're asking, what is the dominant fuel that helps me in sharing my medicine? And then you're asking, what is the dominant fuel that hinders me, that makes it harder, unnecessarily hard for me to share my medicine? For me to take my golden action steps is another way you can ask it. What is the fuel that helps me take my golden action steps? The one that I've been, that I, the dominant fuel that I use a lot to take my golden action steps. And then asking, what is the dominant fuel or what is a fuel that hinders me, that makes it harder for me to take these golden action steps? And now you're going to ask your soul, beautiful soul, show me what fuel, in other words, what feelings are you guiding me to cultivate? And it might just, I, you're keeping it concise. So one or two, not like 10. What, are, what is the most important feeling, fuel, emotion for me to cultivate, for me to really get to know and practice so that I can share my soul's medicine this year in 2024 with the most impact, blessing for me and those that receive it. And so as you ask that, it's almost like your soul's looking at this garden of emotions. She's looking at these flowers and they all represent different emotions. And she's like, this one. This is the one, this is the one that's going to help you so much this year. And so just receive, just receive. And so as you receive that feeling, your soul brings that flower, that flower that represents that emotion. She's holding it. Look at the color. Look at what kind of flower. Maybe it's a flower that you love. Maybe it's a flower you're like, I've never seen a flower like that. 
and your soul hands you this flower and you take this flower that is this fuel and it's made of light and you bring it into your heart as your soul gives you an activation that's going to make it easier for you to start being able to cultivate, being able to connect with this fuel. And as that happens, it's starting to dissolve those other fuels that aren't serving you anymore. Maybe they did at some point, but not anymore. And your soul thanks you for your courage, for your willingness to visit in the soul plane as you walk back through this beautiful purple portal, go back to that purple lavender path, go back to that purple flame in your heart, go back into your heart, your body, in that place where you are right now. We ask your soul to integrate all of this to help you integrate this across all four levels of your being, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, across all dimensions of time. Feel the earth underneath you. As you gently open your eyes, take any stretches that feel good and write down anything in your journal if there's anything you wanna write down. If you want to share anything in the chat, um, any insights you received about what is the fuel that you that is helpful when you share your medicine, what is the fuel that your soul said, mm -hmm, this one's not as helpful. <laughs> what is the fuel that your soul said for 2024, this is the one that will help you the most, the one for you to cultivate. For me, I got... Well, my soul showed me that when I share my soul's medicine, one of my most helpful fuels that I already feel often is love and caring, which is true. And then my soul showed me that a fuel, and I literally could see that this has started in past lives, that hinders me now is struggle, the fuel of struggle. I have to struggle. And it's almost like I saw myself in past lives struggling to share my medicine, meaning that I had to hide. I had to do it secretly. I had to work so hard because, you know, there were so many awful things happening. So struggle was an old fuel that my soul was like, oh, it's time to release that. And then my fuel for 2024 that my soul was really saying to cultivate that was going to help me so much was what I felt yesterday was calm presence. So like calm presence. And it was this gorgeous, beautiful, like purple, lotusy, rosy flower. I don't know. I can't even describe the flower. Anyway, that was mine. So let me see what happened here. Amy, all these C words kept coming to me. Consistent, compassionate, commitment, calm, courage. Yes, I love that. That's beautiful. And so... You know, when we do that workshop or you can start doing it on your own for everyone, start to really tune in. How does this feel in my body? So for me, it's really important to get very good at how does it calm feel in my body? My brain thinks it feels a certain way, but that's not how it feels. I actually have to tune in like, oh, it feels like this. Jill, dominant feel is compassion unhelpful feel is judgment. I love that. That's so interesting that those are like almost polar opposites, Jill. So that's really interesting. I love that you got that insight. 2024 feel devotion and presence. Love that devotion and presence. Thank you, Jill. Jojo, my feel was joy and kindness. Release uncertainty. Oh, thank you for sharing that. That's such a depleting fuel, isn't it? Uncertainty. Because I, I shared a blog about this years ago. 
when we feel uncertain, lean into the certainty of your soul. Your soul is always certain. So the earth plane is uncertain. There's all these things set up to make us feel uncertain. So remember, oh, wait, you know what? I'm feeling uncertain. Let me tune into my soul and receive certainty from my soul. It doesn't mean that your soul is going to give you the whole blueprint right there and say, this and this and this and this and this is going to happen. Because sometimes part of our learning is that we don't know, but we can receive certainty. So thank you, Deborah. Helpful feel is wonder. I love that. That's such a soul child quality. Thank you. My hindrance is obligation. So that's the fuel to let go of. Beautiful. I'm directed to cultivate contentment. I love that. So you will be really tuning into like, how does contentment feel in my body? What is this about? Michelle, dominant fuel. I heard wisdom, but then the whisper of you're holding back and holding in. <gasps> Ooh, I love, Michelle, how your soul really speaks to you in that whisper. You know, 2024 pleasure. I love that. And that'll be really interesting because when we get feels like that, we might think, oh, that's going to be, I mean, I'm not saying it's not going to be awesome, but some of our parts can have triggers around pleasure or joy, right? So I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And so, my dears, we're coming here to the end. Amy, unhelpful feels P words. Oh, my gosh. I love that you're still speaking to you in this way. Perfectionism. Yes. I did that transmission two weeks ago or whenever. Perfectionism kills momentum. And years ago, I did the blog, Perfectionism is the Disease of the Priestess. It's a disease we were infected with, right? That it must be perfect. It's poison. So thank you. Preparedness feels too busy, anxious. Yes, of course, because if it's combined with perfectionism, preparedness is just like, I have to be prepared so it could be perfect and I don't get judged and whatever, whatever it is, right? So thank you, Amy. <laughs> Michelle, trust me, I got resistance towards that word. It's my word of the year. Oh, Michelle, I love that pleasure is your word of the year. My word of the year is wellspring. And my response was puzzlement when I first got it. I was like, what? Wellspring? I, re I resisted it too. It's a lovely word, um, so, but lovely. So I want to remind you. So we're coming to the end. First of all, thank you so, 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 so much for being part of this journey. Whether you were here all five days or you joined for half of the days, whatever it is, Thank you for being here. Thank you for co-creating the space, whether you were here live or on the replay. Remember that there is still that offer for the breakthrough consultation. If you, I think I have maybe one slot in February, but I will be opening my March spot. So if you're interested, do not hesitate. Maybe that is your golden action step, right? To receive some support in that session to really get clarity. I'm like, okay, what is, where am I at now? Where do I want to be? What are the obstacles in the way? And what is the strategy for that, for those obstacles? And then, of course, I'll share the details of my coaching program to see if I feel like I can help you um, and what, what those are. The other thing I wanted to share is obviously I'm going to pull a name from here, but there was something else. Oh, remember, next week is the Mother Mary Heart class. And I really feel like it's going to be of a follow-up to this conversation about emotions, right? Our heart is so tender. Our, I really feel Mother Mary is like the gatekeeper of the heart. And so our heart is meant to feel all of those emotions, to feel the pleasure, feel the joy, and sometimes, yes, feel the sadness. And then there's those feelings that don't serve us, like guilt, self-doubt, shame, you know, there's um, perfectionism. And so I feel I'm really excited to lead that. It's really an energy healing session, I actually tweak the name a bit, because it will really help us to continue this journey of becoming masterful at our emotions so that you can take consistent action and share your medicine. All right, without Further ado, let me see, is there anything else I didn't mention? No. Let's pull the name. 
And actually, I'm going to pull a card for everyone first, not, not each person individually, but group card. This is from the Angels and Ancestors. Ooh, this is so golden action. Shield maiden, make plans and focus. Look at this. All right. Make your plans of your golden actions and do them. Remember, was it yesterday when your soul gave you the guidance? What's your golden action step for this week, for this month, for this year? Okay. Is that? And then let's you from the magical whatever it's called what is it magical spirit oh so beautiful this is so beautiful together okay there is a there is a place within me still calm steady eternal eternal center guru protection peace so i love the balance of these two cards She's like, make a plan, take action. And this is your soul say, saying, remember, there's that place inside of you. So to me, this is the soul blending. And then this is the action as we go into the earth to share our medicine. But they cannot happen without each other. If you just do this, you're going to be like a burnt out heap on the floor, right? And if we just do this, I mean, this might be very fun, but you're not going to share your medicine or anchor heaven on earth, which is what we need, right? So there's that. And then the final card from the Priestess Oracle. Mm. All right. This is what's being awakened in you, in all of us. Summoning power, instinct, intellect, control. And this isn't control from the ego. Okay, this is like, look at her powerful stance. Look at that. She's her... Feet are firmly on the earth. She's got these antlers she's holding in her hands. That power is coming down from her soul. Shh. That perfectly captures that. Shh. All right, lovelies, let's pick the name, drum roll. Not the names, the name. All right, beautiful soul. And remember that it's a blessing. We're all blessed. We're all blessed. Whatever name gets pulled out of the hat. Deborah Rahalski. Deborah, are you here? Deborah, 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 Deborah. Yes, I believe you are. At least I see your name. Deborah, if you can say yes in the chat, that would be lovely. Deborah. Yes, I am. Yes, perfect. Deborah. So I will be doing a channeled reading for you. It's recorded. I know several of you have won these before and it will be specific. It'll be three Oracle cards. Occasionally more come on, but hopefully it'll be three. I will record it, send it to you as an MP3 file. And specifically the question will be about sharing your soul's medicine, a message from your soul. And so not only do I pull the cards, I pull the cards and I really go into that channeled oracular space and share whatever messages come. So anyway, thank you so much. And yes, Jill, thank you so much for celebrating her. And thank you all. I will send the replay later today. And um, let's see, today is, oh, Deborah, just so you know, this will take me about a week or so to do especially because two of my kids are coming to visit. We're so excited. It's the first time they're coming. So, um, you know, with five children that are all young adults, it's very hard to um, synchronize this. So my oldest daughter, Lisa, and my son, Jorgito, Jorge, is, are coming. She's 29. He's 24. I'm so excited. So, um, yes, so you will get it probably by, you know, definitely by next Friday and earlier. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Suzanne, for congratulating her. I know your name was pulled one of the times. And all right. Talk to you soon, lovely, beautiful people. And if you're guided to schedule the breakthrough consult, I would love, love, love to talk to you and love to see you at Mother Mary next week and all the amazing things that are happening. All right. Bye, everyone. See ya.